Hello, 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 everybody. My name is Jill Osborne. I am the president and founder of the Interstitial Cystitis Network. It is Saturday, June 15th. And oh my God, I just finished one of the most important projects I have ever done on IC, like literally sent it in for approval 30 minutes ago. I am ecstatic that it's done. <laughs> Hi, Sherry. How are you? Nice to see you. So uh, the IC Network, we do live support group meetings twice a week, usually on the first and the third Sunday of every month. However, Sunday is Father's Day and my 96 year old dad deserves my attention. So tomorrow I will be with my father. So hi, Susan, how are you? Hi, Erin, hi, Cindy. Oh my goodness. When it's like you get slammed, like just like, you have your normal daily workers just plenty busy and then something else happens and then something else happens and then something else happens. And it's like at the end of the week, you're just like running with a chicken, your head with your head cut off. You should have seen me yesterday. And it's because I was asked by very prestigious, prestigious um, international um, uh, university to write something on IC for them. And I've been working on it secretly for a couple of months and I just finished about 30 minutes ago. So I'm breathing a sigh of relief and just am ecstatic that it's over. Hi, Kate. Hi, Mary. I hope you guys are having a really good day. I mean, it's a cloudy Sunday out here in California. We, we had really hot weather and now we've got foggy, cool weather. I hope some of you are not involved with some of the big rainstorms and that you're safe and warm and comfortable. I hope you're not too warm. Um, I hope the sound is okay. If you guys can let me know how the sound is, that's great. Uh, sometimes the sound gets a little messed up. I'm really happy that we are successfully broadcasting live on on uh, YouTube and Facebook. JJ, dude, I haven't seen you in forever. I hope life is good for you. I uh, haven't seen you over on uh, the game. I've wondered how you were doing. Hi, Toshi. Hi, DP. Oh, this is happiness. I'm very, very happy. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Hi, Sophie. Oh, no. Sorry to hear that, JJ. So you guys, you know, um, one of the things that I had to write in this, in, in this, uh, book chapter was how do patients, um, socialize, you know, here you are stuck at home. It's very hard for you to get out and do stuff. If you're, if you're, if you're in pain, if you've got to find a restroom, whatever, 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 it's tough. And so, um, um, you know, there's this very kind of I want to say plaintive journey that we're on sometimes where we're watching other people have fun while we're kind of sitting there and people might not know that we're in pain and people might not know that we feel left out and people might not know how desperately we need a hug and how desperately we need friends and how tired we are of, of walking this difficult walk and journey alone. And I know, dude, seriously, alone, right? You know, you're the one that's up in the middle of the night in the bathroom. Nobody else is. You are. I know how it feels. I have been there. And so one of the things that I turned to years ago, thanks to my brother, was um, I play some computer games. And um, uh, World of Warcraft is my first love. Um, and one of the things that really struck me about World of Warcraft were all the other people on there who were struggling. Uh, I, I tend to play with a lot of military uh, because I, I come from a military family and I understand what that life is and what those expectations are. And the number of active duty and injured soldiers that are playing, men and women who are playing games is nothing short of amazing. And so to be able to talk with them and socialize with them and tell them that they're, that they're okay and that there is hope is it, it, you not only are you having fun, but you're but you're giving them fun and you're giving them hope. And so, World of Warcraft is something that I love. I will be raiding tonight. Hopefully, if the group is there, I can only play if I'm lucky an hour at night, usually at eleven o'clock, whatever. 
Um, but the other thing that I play is I, is I really like to play Fortnite. Um, and you know, I'll never be a good player. I'll never be a good player. <laughs> One of my Fortnite friends is in here right now. <laughs> Toshi says warlock for the win. Hey, Toshi, man, I'm a hunter all the way. To me, it's all about a bow and arrow and having animals. I love having my, having my pets, having my mounts in the game. What I like about Fortnite is that you don't have to do a lot of work for it. You can just get on and play. And unlike World of Warcraft, where there's a really big grind uh, to get better with Fortnite, you can just turn it on and play and it's free. I mean, it's free. But the best part about it are uh, the other people that you meet, especially especially some of the kids that you meet. I mean, I played with really old folks and I played with really young folks. I played with six-year-olds before. <laughs> and to hear them laugh and have fun and it's just great. I mean, it's just great. And so, um, and it's not, you know, some people don't want to play games where you're shooting things. Um, and I understand that. And I don't like to do that either, but Fortnite is really more about building things. It's about building structures, which of course I'm not very good at, but anyway, you know, it's a thought that counts. So listen, um, I have to make sure that we acknowledge our sponsor for this event, which is Preleaf. Preleaf makes uh, the oldest supplement that has been used by IC patients. It is indeed a calcium supplement that reduces acid. So if you find that you've got to go out and eat something that you're worried that it's going to irritate your bladder, one of the things that you can do is carry Preleaf with you. Um, it's always hard to disappoint grandma when you're going over to her house and she's made lasagna and you know, it's going to kill your bladder, right? But maybe one or two pre-leaf before that can help. Now, what I say with every supplement is seriously, you can't take any of these like candy. Do not take them all day. It's calcium. If you're prone to kidney stone, calcium kidney stones, not the product to take. You can take a Tums if you can take that. But for the vast majority of patients, this has been used safety and effectively for many, many years. And we are really grateful that this company and this product has been available for IC patients for almost three decades. So thank you, Preleaf, not only for sponsoring our chats, but the IC network and also the IC Diet Project, which is, if you, have, if you aren't familiar with the IC Diet Project, it is a collaboration between myself, Julie Beyer, the author of the uh, Confident Choices books, diet books for IC, and Bev Lauman, the author of A Taste of the Good Life. Uh, we come together occasionally and write, um, share recipes and write articles on foods. Um, and, you know, I kind of want to say something about just food for a moment. You know, remember that, that every IC patient is different. And you are on this really interesting journey, my friends, because... You know, thankfully, you're not, we're not back 20 years ago when you were told that there was no hope. We were told that there was no hope and to go, go seek a psychiatrist. I mean, that even happened to me. Now we understand that pelvic pain can be triggered by a multitude of issues in the pelvis. It can come from the bladder. It can come from the reproductive tract. It could come from the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, the uterus, the vagina. It can come from the bowel. It can come from the muscles. It can come from all of those things. And so we are, we are now in this really encouraging place where rather than walking into a doctor's office with your head down, embarrassed and not saying anything, you get to walk, at, you get to walk into the doctor's office looking him straight in the eye and say, I am here to try to figure out why I have this symptom. Now, I always say to patients, please don't walk in and say you've got IC. Why? Because you're going to jump down the rabbit hole of belief structures. If you're going to an older doctor who was trained in medical school 20, 30 years ago, they may still believe that this is, is all in your head or that this is an incurable bladder disease. We don't want to jump down the rabbit hole of beliefs. Instead, I need you to focus on your anatomy first. We cannot talk about the right treatment for you until we understand your unique anatomy because every patient is different. And that's what kind of makes social networking challenging here is you go into an IC support group and you see somebody who's in agony and you worry that that's gonna happen to you, but they may have a completely different variant than you. They may have 
you know, profound endometriosis burrowed into their bladder. Whereas you may have a muscle injury. We cannot compare apples and oranges, my friends. You cannot compare apples and oranges. And so you and I are always going to be on a journey to try to understand our unique anatomy and what is going on with our anatomy that is triggering this pain. And it's doable. Patients were finally understanding why those patients who never responded to Elmeron uh, didn't get better because Hello, if you've got a nerve entrapment or you've got a muscle problem, Elmeron's not going to freaking help you. It's not. And so we're really kind of at a very, very, very exciting time in the IC world. There's so much more hope today than there ever was before. It's really encouraging and it's really empowering. And that's really one of the things that I want you to embrace. Hey man, we are not walking in to a doctor's office in shame. There is no shame. There is no blame. You are hurt. I want you to walk into that doctor's office, proud, strong, confident, appear. I want you to look into that doctor's eyes face to face and say, I have this symptom and I'm here for help. I don't want you walking in down like this. Don't be embarrassed. There is nothing to be embarrassed about here. Nothing. I also want you to be really clear about what your symptoms are. You know, I was just, I was just writing to somebody else in, in kind of in my notes for this big project. I said, you know, in many cases, it's the little thing that a patient like says a year after they're diagnosed that finally figures it out. It's so weird. Like I was working with a man in New York City for years. Like I, I'm going to say five or six years. And he really thought his issues were all bacterial in nature, right? And then one day he goes, you know, Jill, I don't get the symptom I have. And I'm like, well, what's that? And he goes, you know, it's fluttering. It's like whenever I sit down, there's a, a vibration. And I'm like, dude. How long have you had that? He goes, the whole time. I went, you've never told me that. You Have you told anybody about this symptom? He goes, no. It's like, dude, you got a nerve entrapment. No wonder. You know, and, and when we went through that, that's, a, that's exactly what he had. He had a nerve entrapment. So you've got to really think about the weird things that are happening. It's not just the frequency and the urgency and the pressure and the pain. It's like the really weird symptom. Like you're laying on your couch and you're, you feel your, your feet tingling, which happens to me every now and then. Or when you move in a certain position, you've got a weird, a weird symptom. Or when you, um, uh, eat, eat a certain thing like, okay, this is, you know, my true, true confessions here. I got no shame. I mean, you know me, I'll talk about anything, right? I mean, I will absolutely talk about anything here. Um, uh, when I eat Fig Newtons, you'll never guess what happens when I eat Fig Newtons. You'll never guess what happens when I eat Fig Newtons. My rectum buzzes. <laughs> Every single time. It's like, I cannot eat fig Newtons. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But whenever I eat it, things get a little, a little interesting down there. And I do not like it at all. But that's, you know what, man, that's just kind of the symptom that it's important to share. I mean, and now, you know, now I know, okay, well, I have um, uh, incredibly sensitive nerves down there. And that totally explains everything. So life is, life is funny in that way. But again, no shame or blame. Go in and talk about it. If a certain sexual position hurts, tell them. Hey, man, I'm fine if I'm on my back, but if I'm on my side, it hurts. Or if I'm on my, whatever. Just tell them. You are a part of this journey. The information that you share are diagnostic clues that will help you and your doctor figure out why the hell you are hurting so much. All right, let me see. Let's see. We already have questions. Uh, Aaron says it's a lonely journey. Yeah, it, it, it can be, it can be a lonely journey, but 
with the gift of the internet, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Whether you are talking with people uh, on the on the phone or by Facebook or you know any sort of uh, you know Skype something like that, man, you gotta you guys you gotta open the drapes, open your windows, open up your life, and let let the sunshine in and let people back in. It's okay, you can let people back in, and even if it's through a game, why the hell not? Why the hell not? Let's see. Cindy says, it's hard. You're going out tonight. You need to. I need to celebrate tonight. And my celebration is going to include one bottle of a, of a very hard cider, which does not irritate my bladder. But I've got to go get a Father's Day gift. Eee. If anybody has any ideas for a good Father's Day gift for a 96-year-old, please let me know. Ryan says, went to Vegas last week, went off the diet and drank and ate what I want. Now I'm sick. Dude, it happens. It happens. But the point is, is, is that healing is always happening. If you ate something or drank something that irritated your bladder or damaged your bladder, you have to know healing will never turn off. But the bladder is the slowest healing organ in the body. It, take, it, doesn't, it doesn't heal overnight. It takes two, two weeks for one cell to be replaced. So you know what to do. Follow your diet, drink plenty of water, use your heating pad, and you just got to chill for a couple for a couple of weeks and let things calm down and heal, okay? We've all been there. We've all done it. I've done it too. Pam says, please give advice on a good soluble fiber for those of us with IC, with IBS, along with prolapse. Hard finding just the right one. Actually, 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 we just got a new one that came recommended to us strongly called Regular Girl. And this is a uh, fiber. And you know what? I was looking at it before. 100% gluten-free, 100% natural, low calorie, 100% vegan. It's a low FODMAP fiber. You mix one level scoop into six to eight glasses of water, maybe added to smoothies, cereals, and more. It's guar fiber. It's a guar fiber. So regular girl prebiotic fiber with a probiotic blend, Pam, might be exactly, you know, what you need. I, you could at least give it a try. And then, of course, we have our old standby, which is Heather's tummy fiber, which is an acacia fiber. So I would say these two are going to be probably your best options. And you can get both of these over in the IC Network store. So if you go to our website, um, ic-network.com or icnetwork.org, just icnetwork.org, no hyphen, uh, and click on shop and you can find those. Brenda said, let's see here, hold on. Karina says, what do you think about a low oxalate diet for IC? You know, hon, um, so, so, the low, the low oxalate diet is really important for people with vulvodynia. So if you've got constant vulvar irritation and you've been, you feel like you have a yeast infection, but there's no infection. That's what happened to me when I was in high school. The doctor kept saying, I mean, like I would just be crying because my vulva was hurting so badly. And the doctor was basically saying, you have the most sensitive skin I have ever seen. And that was the, 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 it was, um, uh, vulvodynia. Okay. So essentially for, for many of us, vulvodynia means that the nerves directly under the skin of the vulva are hypersensitized. So oxalates are, uh, commonly found in certain foods like spinach, chocolate, berries, and when they are excreted and they end up in your urine, their chemical structure can trigger nerves off. And so many vulvodynia patients report that they flare if they eat foods that are high in oxalates. Um, so the question is, and that's, that's, that's absolutely true. And there's no doubt, 100%, no doubt about it. For some people, some people are oxalate sensitive. I have a, let's see here. Let me see if I can find it here. Oh, here it is. So 
So one of the things that you might find really helpful is the low oxalate cookbook, which is produced by the Volvar Pain Foundation. And also the book, the diet book, For those of you who have this book, A Taste of the Good Life by Bev Lauman, she, and this, this was the first diet book that was ever released for IC patients. God, a long time ago. I don't know when this came out. She's a good friend of mine. 1998. And it's as good today as it was in 1998. And Bev Lauman was the Orange County IC support group leader. I continue to say that she is the smartest, most knowledgeable IC patient in the country about the science of IC. She, her knowledge level, I mean, and listen, she's better than I am. And I think I'm pretty good. I mean, we have a lot of IC experts that are very, very good, but Bev is unique to herself with respect to her knowledge of biological processes, biochemistry and biology. And so when she wrote this book, she actually talked about oxalates in it and she gave a, a list of oxalate foods and, and she suggested that patients, you know, patients who are diet sensitive that you might want to explore reducing oxalates. Um, and even on her, in her recipes, I think I thought that she actually mentioned if it had oxalate foods in it. Let's see here. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is now out of print. I have, and she is retiring. We were hoping that she was going to be, she's been saying for the last 10 years that she's been working on a new book and she has absolutely been working on a new book, but she has other life issues going on and help helping with her husband's business and they want to retire. And so they, she let me know that she is officially canceling her new book. And I offered to buy it from her. I offered to buy any and all of the content she'd already written for it so that we could at least do some articles on it. And I'm still waiting to hear back from her. All right. So anyway, Karina, try the low oxalate, low oxalate diet. Give it a shot. See how you do. Same thing with gluten, guys. I mean, listen, some people say that going gluten-free is a fad. I know for me personally, I feel much better if I go gluten-free. Much better. Um, and so not only for my IC, but for my bowel. So you can play with gluten-free too, but just don't be extreme. Remember, we all have different tolerance levels. Some of you are absolutely, most of you are going to be absolutely fine with oxalate foods and probably with gluten. But some of us who are more sensitive, I see subtype five, central sensitization. There you go. There you go. We tend to be a bit more sensitive to chemicals like that. Let's see here. And you know what? I need some water. Oh, leftover sparkling water from last night and flat. Yuck. <laughs> Guys, you got to remember, you, you have to absolutely remember that if you have to strain to empty your bladder or strain to have a bowel movement, there is a problem. When you strain, you are screwing your muscles up even more. So, you know, remember that urination and relax, uh, urination and defecation are really ultimately about relaxation. That normally when you sit on the toilet to pee or you stand in front of the toilet to pee, muscles relax, a sphincter opens, and you empty your bladder comfortably. If your muscles are tight, it's going to be very hard for you to relax, to empty your bladder. So there you are sitting there with tight muscles and you can't get it all out. And what do you do? You strain and you make your muscles even tighter. And so if you fall and, and then you're in worse shape the next time and you what you see, what we see over time is worsening, worsening, worsening tension in that pelvic floor. So if you are straining, we've got to figure out why. And nine times out of 10, it's screwed up muscles um, or 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 you might not be getting enough fiber. If you are pooping hard marbles. That hurts. That's hard, hard to get out. Or if you're doing too much fiber and you know, your, your bowel is like a long tube, right? 
So how does it move stuff along the tube is it squeezes, right? So you need, you need something to squeeze against, which is why fiber is so important. That gives your bowel something to squeeze against to kind of push it along. If you've done so much fiber that your liquid, you squeeze, the bowel squeezes and it shoots backwards and forwards. There's no mass to push it against. So you're always looking for that perfect delicate balance a fiber that your body thrives on so that you can have normal bowel movements. And it is for some of us a, a daily or weekly challenge, myself included. I'd love to have that perfect combination, but every now and then, you know, things get a little wacky. Alexis loves her pre-leaf stirrings. Um, actually, they're changing their stirrings and they are going to I think they're going to be reducing, uh, ch they're ch just changing it up somehow. They haven't really told me. So we've taken the stirrings off of our website and I think they're going to do the powder in a bottle, like a squeeze bottle. I'm not sure. Debbie says, isn't there a new product coming out? Well, yes, there is a matter, as a matter of fact. All right. So Bladder Builder actually came out a month ago, and I'm very happy to say that over 500 of you are now using Bladder Builder, and so far, uh, we haven't really gotten any complaints about it. I had one person who got diarrhea from it, but she had already taken a lot of other stuff, and it was just too much. She backed off the other stuff, went, stayed on the Bladder Builder. She was fine. And then one other person had a little bit more frequency. Um, and she is a very, very complex case because she's got um, uh, some bowel infections going on. But I kind of operate from the assumption that bad news travels fast. And so far, the, new, the reception for Bladder Builder is going very, very well. So Bladder Builder is a very robust next generation formula that not only includes chondroitin and quercetin, you know, the old standbys that we see in most bladder, you know, bladder health supplements, but what makes this unique is it has um, collagen, uh, which is important for the health of the bladder wall, combined with um, probiotics, some beneficial probiotics. And last but not least, it's got PEA, palmito ethanolamide, which in research studies has been found to reduce chronic pain, including a study from just a month ago at the AUA with PEA and IC. And so with uh, today's uh, struggles for patients getting pain control, to be able to have a supplement that might help with a little bit with pain, with research that backs it up is pretty exciting, okay? But, 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 most of you know the, uh, I wanna swear here, uh, the blank show that we've had the last three weeks with Cisto Protec. The top supplement used by IC patients for the last 15 years, Cisto Protect, now comes with a freaking cancer warning. And the company has yet to issue a statement on it and tell us their plans. It is disgraceful. Apparently, they want to talk with me next week, and I'm going to let them have it. Um, the cancer warning is coming from an ingredient called titanium dioxide that if you breathe it in has been linked to, to lung cancer. However, ironically, it is approved by the US FDA as a food coloring. It's in all your toothpaste and candy. So we've got this here, we, it's FDA approved for this purpose, but we know it's linked to cancer and another purpose. And some of the new research with titanium dioxide is pretty, pretty scary. So as I have said in, in uh, past, in the, the last two, um, support group meetings that I've done online where we've talked about this, um, I have said that I can no longer recommend Sister Project because I would never take it with titanium dioxide in it again. I mean, and, and I had somebody call me, I would tell you, I had a lady call me this week. She was screaming at me over the phone. She said, you had to have known, you must have known, you should have told us. And it's like, and, and I said, no, none of us knew. The only people that knew was the freaking executive at Milan Pharmaceuticals who ordered the change in the label. And it is astonishing to me that they did not stop and think, hey, maybe people don't want to take a product that has cancer warning on it. 
And when you when you combine that with the fact that Dr. Theoharides, the guy who invented it, told them to take it out years ago. Of course, they didn't tell us that. Nobody told any any of us that. It is nothing short of disgraceful. I mean, I've had a hell of a couple of weeks, guys. The good news is, the exciting news is, is that while that blank show was happening, the company that made Bladder Builder that I have been working with for the last year, along with the top IC researcher in the country, we've all been working on this formula for about a year together. It's been a team effort. Um, they came to me and said, you know what? We can make you something like Sister Protect. Uh, because the, I think the brand at this point in time is destroyed. I think it's destroyed. I don't think it's going to survive, to be quite honest. So they came to me three weeks ago and said, we'll make you something that will be as similar to Sister Pro, a Sister Protect as we can, um, that you can uh, provide as an alternative. And they did. And it's called Bladder Rest. Look at that beautiful label, Bladder Rest. It's all about resting. So Bladder Rest uh, arrived this week. It is... It's great. I, you know, I'm trying, trying to, just, the smell is like, um, it's really light and really fresh. And uh, the capsules, if you've ever pried apart a Sister Protect, Sister Protect comes in brown capsules, but inside the brown, the brown Sister Protect, it's yellow. And this is yellow too. And it's a, it's a, it's a pretty small size. So, so this contains chondroitin, but it contains more. You will end up at the end of the day getting 100 milligrams more of chondroitin. It contains um, sodium hyaluronate, more. It contains quercetin, more. Uh, not a lot more, but enough. You know, so it's a stronger, more, stronger, more but robust formula. We took out the glucosamine because that was always considered the one ingredient that was pretty unnecessary to, to bladder health. And we did put in L-arginine and L-citrulline. Oh, and it also has a rutin in it. No titanium dioxide, no caramel coloring, and no pork gel capsule. So bladder rest is now in. Oh, and it doesn't have any olive oil in it, so it's not going to melt in the summer. They replaced it with avocado oil, which is much more heat sensitive or heat tolerant, rather heat tolerant. The best part about it, my friends, is it's cheaper, $10 cheaper, and the price may drop even more. Uh, if we end up, patients really flock to this and like it, we may be able to order more qual uh, higher quantities and drop the price to maybe even $35 right? So if you don't want to take Sister Protect, if you're looking for an option of, of, away from Sister Protect, here it is. Here it is. And maybe the time, you know, I mean, I've always been frustrated with Mylan and those companies and basically screwing around with all of us for a number of different reasons. Um, and the product being unavailable for months at a time. And, you know, it's just, it's been a thorn in our side for a decade. And so to have something that I hope will replace Sister Project is really, really exciting. Okay, so this is the new one. And you can get both of these, Bladder Rest and Bladder Builder, on our website, right? And, you know, I mean, let's see, how do I want to say this? When the only oral FDA approved medication for IC is now linked to retinal damage and blindness, what the hell are you going to do? What are you going to do? And we are so blessed that we actually do have some supplements that have been used for years. And Sister Protect was used, it was developed by an IC researcher 25 years ago. It's been a solid product for many. And so, so supplements had a really important role for patients. And now to lose Sister Protect is, is, is tragic, but at least we've got a viable substitute now. All right here, hold on a sec. Now guys, if I missed your question, I apologize. Please don't take it personally. Please ask it again. The questions go through really quickly on Facebook. Elise says, you make my journey less lonely, Jill. Oh, thank you, Elise. 
I, I, it's one of my reasons for doing this, you know, is the first five years of my IC, are you kidding? I could barely walk the first year. And I couldn't sit in a car for the first five years. I had such bad damage from that chemical accident. So, I mean, I totally get the loneliness. I've been there. And I have moments when I still feel there. You know, you, you still carry some of that with you. But, but you can't dwell on that. What you got to do is focus on today. Right now, you are in a support group meeting. There are 50 people, more than that, in here who share your journeys. You are not alone, my friend. Chris Kristen says, I can no longer urinate on your own. Your doctor says it's due to pelvic floor muscle spasms and you get Botox injected into those muscles, get pelvic floor every week, muscle relaxants. I'm so frustrated. I do have pudendal neuralgia, uh, uh, but can that cause complete retention? So Kristen, it sounds like at some point in time, you sustained a really bad pelvic injury. Do you know what that was? Um, I mean, you know, when the the one thing that I can I can really say to you is that muscles respond beautifully to muscle work. I mean, like I had in college a surgical internship, and so I did surgery for a year when I was getting my pharmacology degree. And I think one of the biggest memories that I have from that is how I could make a little tiny incision and I could stretch it. And it, not only a, a, an incision on your skin, but a deeper incision in the muscles. Um, so muscles are incredibly responsive. You can have a, a tight muscle like this in your pelvis. Um, let me see if I can give an example. So think about and you know, my head is flying, guys, because, you know, I'm just ecstatic that I finished this project. So bear with me here. My head's kind of thinking. I'm thinking about all the things I wrote in this new book. So um, if you, okay, so we use the football player as the example. So you've got a, a, a young male high school football player who um, falls off a ski lift and sustains a terrific tailbone pelvic floor injury doesn't really quite understand it, doesn't really think it's bad. Six years later, bam, intense frequency urgency going right back to those muscles. And so think about it this way. You've got your muscles are supposed to be long and loose and pliant, right? You know, your muscles like this, they're, they're long. When you pop a muscle, see, I've been weightlifting a little bit. I might get my muscles back. When you pop a muscle, the muscles shorten. So a normal muscle fiber is like this, a long released one, but when you contract it, the fibers grow like this, right? And they kind of lock in place so that you can lift something heavy, right? So when you pop your muscle, right, the fibers are actually locking in place, but then they release, they should release. Sometimes they don't release. Sometimes a little group of muscles stay stuck together and you end up with a trigger point, a muscle knot. You get a muscle knot in your back. What do you do? You get somebody to push on it and wiggle it, you know, until you can finally kind of pry it apart, right? And that's what, some, what, this is what happens when somebody rubs it. So here you've got a lockdown muscle in your pelvis. I mean, it's really locked down. Like, man, you could not relax a sucker if your life depended on it. And what are they doing? They're injecting Botox in it, trying to get it to release. You're taking muscle nuts. And, you know, maybe you get a little bit, a little bit, but it's there. In the end, the way we, rest we try to restore proper muscle tone is by physical manipulation. So we might start, you might start with muscles. And just slowly, 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 slowly. And this is what a physical therapist is doing when they're working in your vagina or your rectum. Is they're just, see, they're just kind of rubbing it out, right? And I'm not saying it's fun. You know, if you've got a really tight muscle, it's probably hurting. And when they work it, it's hurt. Don't let the pain scare you. Man, I mean, seriously, if a, if a, 
physical therapist can touch something and trigger your pain. Hallelujah, my friends. That is spectacular news because they've touched it. They've found it. You got this freaking problem right here. Now you might be traumatized by the fact that holy hell that hurt and you might not want to go back to physical therapy but you have to go back to physical therapy because in the end no bladder medicine is going to fix us what's going to fix us is a finger just gently working this and it may take some time to restore the proper function so don't give up on that physical therapy hun don't give up Sophie says she's having problems with not drinking any tea or coffee. Well, girl, come on now. You got to, you, then you're going to either uh, find a decaf tea, decaf low acid tea, or a, a decaf low acid coffee. Um, but, you know, again, it kind of depends upon your subtype. <clears throat> if you got open hunters lesions, you're a fool. You'd be a fool, fool, fool to be continue to drink high acids that are going to pour into those wounds. Let me, in contrast, if you're pelvic floor driven, then uh, you, you can probably get away with some coffee. I'm pelvic floor driven. I can, I can have, uh, I, can, I can get away with it. I don't do a lot of it, but I can do a little bit of it. Um, so think about it this way. So look, here, hold on a sec. I don't know who that is. And I'm not gonna answer it. All right, so look, my friends, this is the, this is 16 pictures of bladders with open wounds, hunters, lesions. If you had an open wound on your hand, would you pour coffee on it? Would you pour soda on it? No. Would that, what would that do to an open wound? It would be damaging. It would make it worse. If you pour coffee every day of the week on an open wound, is that wound going to stay small? No, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's why the patients who drink one cup of coffee a day struggle. If, again, if you've got Hunter's lesions or bladder wall injury. In contrast, you can probably get away with the coffee if you're IC subtype 3 pelvic floor pudendal neuralgia or central sensitization as long as it's not ca uh, ca caffeinated. So I have some here. So um, these are the coffees that I would suggest that you try if you want to go there. Bella Rosa uh, has the lowest level of chlorogenic acid in the industry. Chlorogenic acid is what makes coffee so painful. Um, and so I could, you could do Bella Rosa decaf, Bella Rosa half calf, or full calf. Although, again, caffeine makes you pee. It will give you more frequency urgency. So decaf is always better. Or we've got Tyler's. They call it the first acid-free coffee. That's not quite true. There's always a little tiny bit of acid even in the testing, but that's their marketing campaign, but a lot of patients do it. Or you can do Simpatico. Or you can do Puros, which might be in your grocery store. Or you can do, uh, what's the one up in Canada we used to sell? It's two words. There's one up in Canada. It'll come to me. Carolyn, can scoliosis play a part? Oh, hell yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. Because when you've got scoliosis, inevitably, you're probably going to have one hip that's higher than the other that's going to tweak your pelvic floor. I've got scoliosis. I do. I have an I have an S curve. I don't know if I can if I can bend over and show it to you. Again, guys, I have no shame. I mean, I'm not going to take my clothes off for you, but... Here, look, if I bend over, you're going to see that I've got one shoulder higher, higher than the other, right? So look at that. See that? You would never know, looking at me, that I've got scoliosis. But I'm supposed to be about an inch taller. Okay, what's beeping? Oh, okay, there you go. So ultimately, in the end, scoliosis is really all about the fact that it's tweaking your pelvic floor to a certain degree. And um, uh, working with a pelvic floor physical therapist or, or any physical therapist, not internally, but externally, to kind of understand the ramifications of your curve 
I think it's important because you may be walking in a different way that they can fix. You may need, maybe you've got one leg that's slightly shorter than the other that a lift might help to get your hips level or not. Carolyn, if you ever want to talk about it, uh, feel free to give me a phone call. I always, I've always said for years, if there's one thing I could fix in my body, it would be my scoliosis. Um, I would like to not have, I mean, my ribs, not that you can see this, not that you need to see this, but here's my hip bone and here's my ribs. It'd be really nice to actually have an inch there of space that's supposed to be there. Okay, Karen was saying something about Pero, there are herbal coffees, Pero, Caffrey, Roma, Caffix that some patients like. They tend to be a little bit on the bitter side. You tend to have to use some cream and sugar with those, but those are also available, herbal coffees. All right, so, oh, Facebook, you guys are doing such a good job supporting each other, but it's, it's going by so quickly, I'm missing conversations here. Yeah, uh, some of you are talking about doctors who are being mean. Um, and you know what? Hey, you know how you combat doctors who are mean? You, co you come in with, with knowledge. You come in with education. You come in with the American Urology Association guidelines for IC. You don't fight back by being mean. You fight back with knowledge. You fight back with power. Nobody could ever tell me IC is in my head anymore. And I'm not going to yell at them. I'm like very going to calmly educate them and say, here it is. And this is not me. This is the American Urology Association. I would suggest that you read them. I always tell people, I want you to carry three, I want you to have three copies of the AUA IC guidelines. One for you to read, to memorize. <clears throat> you need to read it. You need to understand it. It's, a, it's laid out in a whole bunch of facts that are really easy to absorb. Number two, you need to give one to your urologist. Um, so they, because I will tell you, the vast majority of urologists have never read it, don't even know it exists, even though it's been out since 2011. And number three, always carry one with you. If you end up going to see another doctor, or you go to the emergency room, especially if you encounter some idiot who's going to tell you it's not real, hand them the guidelines and say, the American Urology Association begs to differ with you, kind sir. Hi, Mary from Orange County. Gail says she's throwing out your sister Protuck. Gail, if you bought it from the IC network, you can send it back to us, um, uh, even if it's open, because the company apparently, well, they haven't, I mean, I've been told that they will take it back. We have to work out. There's a whole lot of crap to work out with this. It's ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous what's happened. And so they've got a. Uh, uh, create some re uh, some refund terms, and they haven't done that yet. And I'm going to try to work that out that work work that out with them. I'll tell you one thing: the IC network is not going to going to eat this for their mistake. I've actually refused to pay my last two invoices with them until it works out. Hey man, I'm tough. I'm a tough cookie these days. I won't take it for me and I won't take it for you. I just won't. Went to my first pelvic floor exam. It was fine. The girl did the exam was so nice, made me feel comfortable. I don't think she's familiar with the five subtypes. Is there any way to explain it to her? Yeah, Carol, on our website, in our uh, free downloads, there is a fact sheet on it that you can download and give to her. Go on over to icnetwork.org, icnetwork.org. We finally got the new domain name working. No hyphens, nothing like that. icnetwork.org will take you over to our website now. Just go to the free downloads and you can get that fact sheet. Nancy says, what about Elmeron to me? Is here? Yeah, you know, Nancy, the thing with Elmeron and the eye damage is that, I mean, we've already been con contacted by one law firm and they are watching this very, very closely. And I have, uh, I am keeping in touch with them. Um, the Emory eye researchers, when they 
a year ago shared their belief that Elmeron was causing an eye down, eye, this rare eye disease called pigmentary maculopathy, they did their due diligence and they found an early Elmeron study, a four, either a three or four year study that was one of the studies that led to its FDA approval. And that study um, involved hundreds of patients and it was the first study to actually show eye damage. It's retinal hemorrhaging among, among others. I had never seen that study. I mean, you have to understand. I mean, I've been involved with IC for 25, almost 30 years now. I have never seen any discussion of eye damage with Elmeron until the Emory researchers came out. And I was talking to one of the attorneys on... Um, And I pulled this out. This is one of the old, um, this is, I don't know, from five or six years ago. Yeah, from 2013. This is one of the old Elmeron information kits. I had a lot of old stuff. I threw some stuff away, darn it. But in this kit, patients got a brochure explaining Elmeron. And it's just like, what is IC? Could IC causing your symptoms? Important safety information. The most common side effects are hair loss, diarrhea, nausea, blood in the stool, headache, rash, upset stomach, abnormal liver tests, dizziness, and bruising. Is there anything in here about eye stuff? Oh, hell no. What did we all read? The company produced materials. So, so the real question is, how many of you read the product spec sheet? Right? You know, the little, the little almost impossible to read product sheets that you get with every prescription. This is the one that says, as the very last adverse event, special senses, colon, conjunctivitis, tinnitus, optic neuritis, ambulopia, and retinal hemorrhage. You know, and hello, I have a, you know, I'm trained to be pharma, a pharmacologist. That's my original training. I didn't absorb that. Did any of you absorb that information? Shouldn't that information have been in the freaking patient brochure? Don't you think it should have been here? And so I think that that's really interesting. I think it's really interesting that they knew that there were eye issues in that first study, so much to the point that they had to put it on the product spec sheet, but they didn't educate patients about it. And I would like to know why. I would like to know why, why that happened. Cher says, does bladder builder or bladder rest have any side effects? Um, Cher, so far, the only we've only had two reports of side effects. And if anybody out there is using it and you experience one, please call me and tell me right away. Send me an email, but call me. I, I want to hear about it because anytime you launch a new supplement, because we did the Sister Protect product launch and the Sister Renew product launch in the first six months, are always, you know, like, please, God, you know, is this okay? So share right now, we've got about 500 people who are, who are currently using uh, Bladder Builder. I've only had two people call. One said it gave her diarrhea. She was taking a lot of other stuff, including a full dose of Desert Harvest Aloe and a full dose of Cisto Protect. When she backed off on the other ones and just did the Bladder Builder, she was fine. And then another patient had a little bit of frequency. Uh, bladder rest is very new. We've only just started sending it out. Um, there should not be any side effects other than the side effects that we might have seen with Sister Protect because it's the exact same formulas. Um, and as always, you know, what works for one person might not work for the other. Whenever you try something new, especially if you're sensitive, just take one capsule and see if you like it. See how you feel. That's how I do. I do it. I've taken Sister Protect before. I like Sister Protect. It felt like warm cotton candy in my bladder. I mean, I liked it when I took it. I took it when I was having flares. But I could never take more than one. If I took two, it gave me loose bowels. Got three or four, holy hell, would be mega diarrhea. 
So it's all about finding the, the level that will work for you. I always say, say to patients, for God's sake, don't take a full dose the first day of anything. You know, you got to give your body, you got to, you know what works best in your body. And most of us tend to go very, very slow. I'm extremely reluctant to dive in, into anything. So if anybody's confused, the sister protec is not linked with blindness, the Elmer or, or eye damage. The Elmeron is linked to the eye damage. Sister protec has a cancer warning on it for titanium dioxide, which can cause lung cancer if you breathe it in. Sherry says, can you take bladder builder and bladder rest at the same time? No, don't do that. There's no reason. More is not better. More is not better. Pick one and try it. Don't double it up. You don't want to overload your body. Cindy says, can big babies cause pelvic trauma? Hell yes, it, they absolutely can. Can C-sections cause pelvic trauma? You bet they can. And in fact, um, if you have a lot of tenderness around your scars, which is very common, one of these books, um, Ending Female Pelvic Pain has a section on how to work with painful scars. Um, you want, you definitely want to roll them and work on them to try to break up the adhesions, but it can be very hard. So uh, where is it? Here it is. So there's a whole chapter on working with scars in here, scar massage therapy basics, scar trigger point release, abdominal scar massage long strokes to restore flexibility to a C-section scar, massage it with long strokes along the length of the scar, perform 20 strokes from left to right, and then as the pain decreases, go deeper until you get to the layer of the adhesions and then repeat 20 strokes to the right, according to Isa Herrera. You can do clockwise circles. So this is one of her pictures here. So if your hysterectomy scar is along here, you can just kind of pick a circle and rub on it, pick a circle and rub on it, right? There's also a thing with lifting where you lift your scar, scar rolling. Now don't do it on your own guys, seriously. For God's sake, educate yourself first, like get the book. Also, when you're doing pelvic floor work, you know, um, like I want I'm going to show you this picture, right? But it's a deeply feminine picture. They, they all, so here is, here is for a woman, you know, your inner bits. And they actually uh, kind of use a clock. So the top is, uh, 12, the bottom is six, nine, and they will give you exercises to do based upon the clocks, the clock position. So like for me, it is 10 o'clock that I am supposed to be working and not 10 o'clock time wise, 10 o'clock anatomically. Uh, I also tend to work downwards. I feel better. And she talks about that. Sometimes you, Anyway, you can read about it. I'm not a medical expert here, guys. I, you shouldn't. Uh, listen, I'm here to educate you, but you got to go work with the experts. You deserve the best. I'm not the best. Ah, let's see. Let's see what's happening down here on YouTube. Teddy, my OBGYN says I have IC, but my urologist says I have an overactive bladder and the IC doesn't exist. <laughs> You know what, Taddy, ultimately in the end, you kind of have to get to the perspective where you go, who the hell, what it's called? You know, you just kind of have to go, who the hell cares what it's called? Here are my symptoms. What do you think my symptoms are and how can we deal with my symptoms? You're encountering a doctor who was trained years ago. He's wrong. But we also have different variants of, of IC too. 
Uh, you know, we had a, uh, as an example, uh, we had the chief of the, the former chief of the urology department at UC San Francisco did not believe that IC was real. This was years ago. I mean, this was, he's long retired. He might even be dead by now. This was decades ago. Um, and a patient who was diagnosed by somebody like Robert Moldwin brought her video, her video of her hydrodistension showing her Hunter's lesions. So she passed him the video and say, here's the video. And he goes, I don't need to look at it. You don't have IC. When she called me up on the way, she was in my support group. She called me up uh, driving home and she was really excited. She said, guess what? I don't have IC. I was like, hallelujah. How'd you figure that out? And, and the, she said, well, the doctor doesn't believe in IC. And I said, okay. So he doesn't believe in the word IC. But do you have symptoms? And she goes, yeah. And I said, well, what do you do for your symptoms? She goes, nothing. So, you know, you got to call that the, the IC rabbit hole. That's why you go in and you talk about your symptoms. Don't say IC at first. Okay, let's see. Rhiannon is watching from the emergency room and a huge flare. Girl, I'm so sorry you're there. I'm so sorry that you are at the ER right now. I hope that they're treating you well and I hope you've got a porta potty next to your bed. I hope you're in a bed already. And your goal now at the ER is to really, with them, now listen, what they're gonna do is they're gonna rule out the big things. They're gonna rule out UTI. They're gonna, you're probably gonna have uh, an intern do a pelvic exam. Let's just make sure that there's nothing structurally fundamentally wrong there that they need to know about like a prolapse or a hernia or who knows in the end though what you want to kind of direct them to is your structures you know and so we want to rule out uti make sure nothing else is going on with your bladder is there blood in your urine anything at all like that but then you got to turn to your reproductive system and let's go, okay, is there anything potentially contributing going on with my reproductive tract? Is there per, ch per chance a large fibroid tumor pushing on uh, your, your bladder or could you have an ovarian cyst? We got to like, they got to take a look at that. Let's try to figure that out. Make sure also there's nothing going on in your bowel. Is there, could there be an obstruction? Are you having normal bowel movements? Are you having cramping? Anything like that? You know, ERs are kind of designed for life-threatening stuff, and that's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to rule out. Um, you'll probably be home pretty soon, crossing fingers. Yeah, but now you're going to have to come back and work with your urologist, work with your pelvic floor person, and really, we got to figure out what's triggering the flare, what kind of flare it is. Another, a good way of, uh, uh, an, an easy way of looking at that is when is your pain the worst? Before you before you're done, before you pee or after you're done peeing. If your pain is worse, is your bladder fills with urine and it is relieved by urination, then we can look at your bladder. If your pain is worse, not before you pee, but after you're done peeing, we're gonna look at your pelvic floor instead. All right, who just texted me? Here, hold on a sec. Uh, hold on. We're trying to get a coconut cake for my dad for tomorrow. He loves coconut. Like, what do you give a 96 year old for Father's Day? Coconut. <laughs> for him, it's coconut. Anything with coconut, he loves. All right. Okay, so it's finally out spasms and pain since November 2018. Had to have seven installations, more. Uh, uh, she says diagnosis on bladder, the di diagnosis was bladder lining and pelvic floor spasms. How good it feels to not have your stomach moving in a pain. Hallelujah, Kay. Congratulations. Rhiannon says your uro urologist referred you for an inner stem device. Uh, what's your opinion, hon? I've talked a lot about inner stem. You kind of have to ask yourself, what are you hoping neuromodulation is going to accomplish? If your problem is a Hunter's lesion, neuromodulation will not fix that lesion, it, okay? If your problem is pelvic floor, neuromodulation 
is not going to be as effective as pelvic floor work. If you have central sensitization and or really messed up nerves, neuromodulation might be helpful. And I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Over on our website, we've got four support forms dedicated to neuromodulation. Uh, one is called considering it, one is called trying it, one is called successes, and one is called failures. I would encourage you to go read that. I will tell you that there are two forms of neuromodulation. One is done at the ankle and does not involve any surgery. The other is done at the spinal cord or the sacrum. That's inner stem. That does involve surgery. Uh, there are many, 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 many hundreds and hundreds of adverse event reports with inner stem filed with the FDA in a publicly available database. Um, it's called the MOD database. So most patients do not do inner stem first. They do urgent PC, the ankle stimulation first. It's much cheaper. There's no surgery. There are hardly any side effects. And it, it's, as, it's Medicare approved. I was one of the first patients to do it in 1993. And it broke me out of a wicked year-long flare. Uh, at week four, I had my first hour without pain. At week seven, I had my first day without pain with urgent PC. Okay, so got, uh, come over to our website, read about the different forms of neuromodulation. Mary says, have they ever done studies on azathanin, as the xanthan and I see? I don't know, let's look. Let me go to the trusted National Library of Medicine, which is where I get all of my stuff. A me spell this. Z A S T H A Z A N D H I N interstitial cystitis. Is that the right way to spell it? I, it's not it's a, it's not coming up with any any studies if that's the right way to spell it, hon. You have to you have to Google it and see if you can come up with the right spelling. Hello, Renee. You ordered Sister Renew. What's the difference between Sister Renew, Bladder Builder, and Bladder Rest? Okay, Bladder Rest is the perfect compromise between Sister Protec and Sister Renew. Uh, so uh, sis, so Sister Protec contains chondroitin. Hyaluronate, quercetin, rutin, and an olive oil base. Sister Renew contains chondroitin, quercetin, uh, aloe, and lemon balm to calm nerves down, as well as L-arginine and L-citrulline. Bladder rest is exactly in the middle. It contains a little bit of both. It contains chondroitin, Hyaluronate, quercetin, rutin, L-arginine, L-citrulline. It did, we did not put the aloe in it because a lot of people have issues with aloe with gut distress. And we did not put the lemon balm in it because it's so confusing for patients to say lemon, they freak out. Uh, so bladder rest is the perfect, perfect centered supplement. And it is $10 letter, $10 cheaper now. You said you don't hear me much talking about Sister Renew, and I'm just curious. You know, you don't hear me talking a lot about Sister. I mean, I have, I, we did the product launch for it five years ago. Um, I, I, I have, I always say, you know, when Sister Renew came out, I mean, okay, let's take a step back in time for a moment. Sister Protect was invented about 20 years ago, give or take a year or two, by Dr. Theo Herides. And we had always hoped that Dr. Theo Herides would in fact create a new supplement because Sister Protec is an old formula. We've learned a lot about IC in that time. And I, he told me personally that he wanted to do that. I mean, we used to have a lot of conversations about that. But then they sold off the US licensing rights to Sister Protec to these other companies, to this other company who was, it was then bought by several people and now my land owns Sister Protec. Part of that agreement was a non-compete agreement. So he was not allowed to create another supplement, which was really sad because 
he had a really keen insight into kind of the biomechanics of IC and the bladder wall and stuff like that. So another doctor, Dr. Gio Espinosa, who's actually come into these meetings every now and then, uh, he's the head of integrative urology at New York University. He created Sister Renew five years ago as the next generation supplement. And he did a beautiful job. So what he did is he took the best of the other supplements, put them in one supplement, and then he added another ingredient. So he's got the chondroitin and the quercetin from, from Sister Protect. He's got the aloe from Desert Harvest Aloe. And then they put in lemon balm because lemon balm is known for its ability to calm and soothe, soothe, soothe nerves. And so when, when it came out, and even up to today, the vast majority of Sister Project users who tried Sister Renew loved it and absolutely felt it was a better formula and most transitioned over. But there's a, there's a small population of patients who just love the formula of Sister Project. And they tried Sister Renew, they didn't like it, or they might be aloe intolerant, and then they went back to Sister Project. Um, and, and unfortunately, they're you know, for the first time in the career or the history of Sister Protect, it now has really negative feedback. It's scary. You, Who in their right mind is going to take a product that says, warning, cancer and reproductive harm? I wouldn't. I would not. And, and almost everybody that I'm talking to would not do it either. So you know, we're kind of screwed. So that's why the bladder rest came along. Uh, Renee, I hope that that kind of explained it for you. I mean, I, I, when I'm working with patients on the phone, I talk about all of them because to me, it's all about options. The worst thing I want to do is turn you away from the one thing that can help you. But I, but you know, so, so my goal is to support group leaders to show you the options and kick you in the butt and get you back to talk to your doctor about stuff. I mean, ultimately, in the end, that's really what we should be doing. Um, I, I, I simply cannot support Sister Protect in this formula. I cannot. I refuse to. Mary says she takes azathanthin for nerve, nerve damage, pain, knee pain, and your IC pain's almost gone. I was wondering if I could. I just, so I just wonder if I take no meds for IC or pain 95% of the time. That's fat. You know, hun, let me write it down. Hold on. If only you could see my office is covered with post-its. They're just over here. You can't see them. Let me just put this on my thing and uh, maybe I'll try to do a story on it. I have to spell it right though. A S T H A Z A N T H I N for nerve damage. And I'm going to write your name down. And um, if you want to send me an email, if you could send me an email, that would be awesome so that I can get back in touch with you because if, if it looks good, we want to tell your story, right? We need to give other patients hope here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got about 20 post-its right here along my computers. <laughs> Mary says, very good explanation of PFD. I wouldn't have believed it would ever work for me, but Dr. Brodak referred me a few years ago and it got me out of a terrible flare. Yeah, baby. Hi, Jill. Toby says, do you have information on Cystostat? It's being used in instills in the UK, made by Mylan. So Cystostat uh, was originally approved in Canada by a company called BioNiche. It is liquid uh, hyaluronic. And uh, so they, uh, years ago, back in the 90s, uh, it was one of the bladder installations that was very popular up in Canada. So you had Cystostat and you had Uracyst. Cystostat was uh, hyaluronate. Uracyst was liquid chondroitin. They were both uh, in instilled into the bladder. And what's interesting is those two companies, Toby, were viciously 
undermining each other. It was really entertaining. I mean, if I think of all the millions of dollars they both invested in trying to prove that their product worked, it's nothing short of astonishing. When they tried to bring it down into the U.S., it failed all the research studies and the FDA would not approve it. And so it's, it's never going to make it into the U.S. Um, uh, because it, it really did fail the basic studies that they're required to do to get FDA approval. But something really interesting happened in Europe, and that is somebody combined them. They combined the two into a new supplement, which I, a, a new installation, which I think is called Ialuril, I-A-L-U-R-I-L. I think that's the name of it. And the irony of ironies is when you put them both together, they work better, better than ever. So, Toby, I would look at Ialuril. I'm pretty sure. Hold on, let me just double check because I've got men. I've got memo pause. Let me make sure I got the spelling right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. I wish I could screen share so you could see. I really. I want you guys to see where I go for all this so you can you can do it yourself. It's funny in Europe they call it a medical device, but it's not it's an installation. They just call them installations. All right. Sophie says, my bladder looks like someone took a knife to it. So Sophie, was, I mean, it's very interesting to figure out what it was. Was it, was it chemotherapy? Was it uh, an infection? Was it artificial sugar? Aaron says, my biggest issue is pelvic floor. My muscles get so tight. I've had bowel issues my whole life. Cindy says, my hips have never been even. Me neither, my friend. Mary, Mary Bianca uses an herbal coffee called Ticino. I found Ticino to be very bitter. I could not swallow it. I didn't like it at all. Cindy says, I've been recently diagnosed and given a list of foods to avoid, but I don't know how to start to determine which ones give me problems. Any advice? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I kind of wrote the book on that. One of the books on that. Um, where is it? Oh, that's so weird. Where is it? All right, somebody look in my office and find the IC Chef Cookbook. It's got to be here. That is so weird. Come on, I use it all the time. All right, well. One of my one of our adventures in every meeting is what's gonna fall. <laughs> All right, where is it? All right, well, hun, if you come to the IC Network webpage, what you're gonna find, go to the diet section. There's gonna be two lists. The first list is the research list. And so that's going to list the foods that research studies have identified as irritating. We also have a website called the IC Diet, uh, Diet Project. And I think that you would probably find that helpful too. So we have a whole bunch of articles on our website on our diet. But if you go to the link for the IC food list, the first is a small list of the most bothersome foods and the least bothersome foods. So the most bothersome foods, coffee, regular decaf, tea, carbonated beverages, alcohols, 
citrus fruits, fruit juices, cranberry, grapefruit, orange, pineapple, veg, the tomato and tomato products, flavor enhancers like hot, hot peppers, spicy foods, chili, horseradish, vinegar, MSG, artificial sweeteners, and some hot, spicy ethnic foods. What are the least bothersome foods? Water, milk, bananas, blueberries, honeydew melon, pears, raisins, watermelon, or vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, although you couldn't pay me to eat a Brussels sprout. The gas is explosive. All right, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, cucumber, mushrooms, peas, radishes, squash. I always say the vegetable aisle is your friend. It is your friend. You can eat meat, fresh meats, whether it's, whether it's poultry, whether it's meat, whether it's seafoods. You can do grains, oats, rice. You can do popcorn, pretzels. I do a lot of popcorn. It's, I eat popcorn two or three times a week organic popcorn. So you kind of start with that. Um, but inevitably, patients freak out and you become afraid to eat everything. And that's bad. You, you, there are a ton of food that you can eat. We're really saying lose the strong acids, lose the caffeine, Lose the fast food, lose the junk food. We need you to eat simple, fresh, healthy food and to stay away from the strong acids. We got to the point about 10 or 12 years ago that so many patients had overreacted to the diet that they had stopped eating. They were afraid to eat anything. And that was terrible because there are a ton of foods that you can eat. Um, and so what we did is we expanded a whole bunch of us from the IC Network, the ICA, Bev Lauman, Julie Beyer. We created a very expansive diet list because our purpose was to show you the depth and breadth of what you could eat. And it has brand names and stuff like that. And you can, it's called the ICN food list. You can download that for free right on our website or it's in the IC Chef Cookbook. And that's organized in three columns. So it's in bladder friendly, try it, caution. So you're obviously going to avoid all the caution foods. Piece of cake. The bladder friendly should be fine for most of you. And you're probably going to be able to eat 90% of the try it foods. But those you just have to be a little bit more thoughtful about. Try a small amount and see how you do and go from there. All right. Cindy, Julie Beyer, who's the first registered dietitian to really take an interest in IC because she's an IC patient, does coaching, and she is happy to work with anybody by phone, but it, it, it is, you have to pay for it. She's also been uh, freely moderating our, all of our information on IC for 20 years over on the IC Network website. We also have about 100 articles on, on diet. Uh, in the uh, Fresh Taste by Bev column, as well as over on the IC Diet Project. So guys, go on over to IC Diet Project, icdietproject.com, and check that out. we got some good summer recipes on there right now. I get to, I get to moderate, to uh, curate that, and I really love doing that. Uh, so, so Billy's just kind of giving uh, an, an interesting way of, of focusing on the icy diet when you're really confused. He said, I didn't eat anything for 24 hours, only drink water. And then you added one food for two days and a second food for two days. You will know as time goes on which foods work. A wee bit extreme, a little bit extreme. But that's, that's definitely kind of what you do. You've got to go back to those clean, basic foods. You know, so I would be doing, if you could get away with rice, you could get away with chicken, you could get away with some vegetables, lose the coffee, all that sort of stuff, stick with water. And I would even back away from all the grains other than rice, because most people are fine with rice, but although some people aren't. Um, backing off on the grains and then introducing them one at, one at a time is important too. Dawn says she had severe dry eye when you took Elmeron. That's very interesting. Marion asked me, do I only take Sister Protect when I have a flare? I used to, but I don't do that anymore because I don't have as many flares now. Lydia, 
girl. I started taking Bladder Builder and have been taking it for three weeks. I am now taking it three times a day. I was on Elmero and have completely stopped it. I have had no pain since you started Bladder Builder. And you have been able to sleep through the night without getting up to go to the bathroom. Oh, man. That is so exciting. I'm so happy for you. That's what we were hoping, you know? I mean, this whole Bladder Builder project that's been going on for a year, we were, you know, I mean, the, the gentleman who is the kind of the effort behind it is just brilliant in his formulations. And, um, he was just taking lots of feedback from me and from other people. And I, I think as a supplement, it's pretty, pretty good. I am so happy for you, Lydia. If you could go leave a testimonial over on the website, that would be great over in our store. It'd be wonderful. Lindsay, what's your thought on pelvic floor therapy? And do you know if it's covered in, by health insurance? A lot of health insurance companies do cover it. We have a whole section of it over on our website, including some videos. We have a lot of books on it. It's a must. Honey, you, if you've got, again, seriously, if you've got muscles that are locked down, you know, think about it this way. Let me get my, let me get my ball here. So what makes the pelvic floor such an important muscle system for all of us is that it's a muscle system that also controls important bodily functions because your pelvic floor holds your bladder. It encases your bladder, it encases your reproductive tract and your rectum. So there are holes going through the muscles for your urethra, your vagina, and your rectum, right? So a good healthy pelvic floor holds everything in place and yet and it allows urine to flow through easily. It allows a penis to enter your vagina without torture. It allows you to have a bowel movement if you're a woman, right? But if your pelvic floor is tight, guess what? Peeing is hard because you have to relax it enough to let urine out. Sex is almost impossible when you have tight pelvic floor muscles. It hurts. Having a bowel movement is hard. Um, and because your muscles are locked down. The only way to fix that, well, and let me just give you the opposite extreme. If your muscles are loose, hello, prolapse. That's when things start falling out of you. So we got to keep these muscles in good health. So if your muscles are locked down like this and you cannot pee, a pill is not going to fix this. What's going to fix this is fingers on the muscles, slowly, slowly, slowly working them out. And you being attentive to the fact that there are things that you might be doing at home that might be reinforcing that tension, like straining or doing the wrong exercises at the gym that could be messing those up. Or kegels. You only do kegels if you've got weak muscles. If you're incontinent because your muscles are weak, hell yeah, you do kegels. But if you're tight, the last thing you want to do is tighten them more. And that's what a Kegel does. Our goal here is to loosen and relax and release. And it takes a finger up you know where to make it happen. Do not be embarrassed by somebody working down below in your lady bits. Because that's, that's where they have to do it. It's just where they have to do it. You know, you cannot access, access these muscles externally. I, I will say that my, um, with the new, I've, I've been seeing a new physical therapist, um, uh, for my left side piriformis and he doesn't do internal work. He's a, he's a pro athletic guy. And I used to play pro, pro sports and just kind of really thought that a lot of my muscles related to old injuries, which they do to a certain degree. Um, and what he, and I've had a lot of trouble sitting and working. I mean, even right now I have pain in my left butt cheek and it's vibrating. 
not it's not as bad as it used to be but it's there i'm gonna have to i can't do this much longer i mean another hour maybe i'll have to stop um and what he has been able to show me is that in the end it's my core that is the biggest problem here my core has been so badly weakened by sitting so much and working and i was not doing core centric exercises and so that and so and he's got this whole way of explaining you know kind of a hits to b hits to c makes you know makes weird things happen and and so we've been doing a lot of core work and we've also been doing a lot of psoas work the psoas so if this is your pelvic floor right so you got muscles that go from left to right you've got muscles that go from front to back and you've got muscles that go from low to high uh with the most important muscle group that goes from low to high are your psoas muscles they're big meaty muscles that go up kind of the inside of your hip bone, right? They go up this way. And you feel them in your back and you feel them in your belly. And, and uh, what's so interesting for me is that although I have left side tenderness, it's my right psoas that is very, very tight. And that's all a comp weird compensation. So it's quite a mystery to, to resolve these pelvic floor things. Just telling you. Got to really be, work at it. Hello, John. Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Julie. Rhonda says, is bladder rest over the counter? You bet it is. Over the counter. Melody, I suffer from ICS. I, since 2000, 2013, my husband and I are rarely having intercourse because I suffer with pelvic pain and flare-up days afterwards. It's really affected my marriage. All right. So, Melody. Melody. Um, uh, the reason why you have pain after sex is because of your pelvic floor. The, and, and, and the odds are the act of sex itself for most of us is fine. It's about six hours afterwards that the flare kicks in. And the flare kicks in because in women, and this is one of the interesting differences between men and women. A man has his most violent pelvic floor spasm when he ejaculates. So for a man with pelvic floor issues, when he ejaculates, it's like a knife up his penis. Okay. Our spasms occur after we're done, usually about six to eight hours after you have an orgasm or you have, well, an orgasm. What happens is your pelvic floor goes into a pattern of gentle spasms. And I think it's all about helping sperm meat egg, to be quite honest. And that will, that will happen for about 24 to 48 hours as these muscles just gently do their thing. And so you need to have an, an aftercare program for that. That's when women will use a vaginal Valium suppository because that will stop that spasm. Or you use a muscle relaxant like Baclofen or Flexeril. And it's, it's the true heart and soul of your husband's love that has him saying he doesn't want to hurt you. And that's such a kind soul. We don't want to hurt the people we love. And, and you have to, you know, we had, um, uh, as I've talked about this a couple times, so let me just, I'm just going to throw this out because it's a really good story to share. Um, when I started my first support group in 1993, 19, uh, that long ago when I was just a baby, um, uh, we had a contact at the UC San Francisco Medical School and the doctor who taught, who taught sex anatomy and sex function to all the residents going through medical school offered to come speak to our group. And we were ecstatic because, you know, sex is painful when you've got pelvic pain. And yet we have to make sure we keep our relationships together. That's important. Love is important. Caring is important. Tenderness, affection is important to our lives. So, you know, none of us had met this guy and he showed up and, oh my God, he looked like Santa Claus. We just looked at each other and we, my co-leader Evelyn and I, we just went, oh my God, Santa Claus is going to come and talk about sex to us. It was hysterical. Absolutely hysterical. I mean, appearances, appearances 
where his appearance was very, very deceiving. Lovely man, roly poly laugh, you know, belly shaking when he laughed. And I'm telling you, the guy was Santa Claus. He gave the best lecture on sex ever, 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 ever. One of the first things he said to us is never, ever ask a doctor for advice about intimacy, because I can promise you if there's anybody who's really screwed up, it's your doctor. And we're like, why? He goes, think about their schedule. Come on, they're working 18 hour days. You think they're normal? Hell no, they're not normal. They're struggling too. <laughs> we were just rolling laughing, right? Um, and then he, he, you know, he did his thing. One of the things you got to remember is that sex changes as we get older, right? As our bodies mature and as we mature, we, we, we get different things out of intimacy. So when you're young, when you're a teenager, in your early 20s, sex is really a fast and quick. It's a slam, bam, thank you, ma'am kind of approach. It's pretty fast. I mean, you're done in a couple minutes usually. And, and then as time goes on, we change and affection becomes important. Hugging each other, sleeping with each other, holding each other becomes almost equally important to the act itself. And so what you find as you get older is that the actual penetration loses importance as affection increases in importance until when you're in your 70s and 80s and maybe cannot have penetration because of estrogen atrophy or because of prostate issues, you can still be intimate by hugging, loving, kissing, and stroking, right? So it is important to understand that every couple is going to adapt and change. And your ability to cope in these moments when one of you cannot have sex is important. It's important. You wouldn't expect somebody with a broken hip to have sex, just like you wouldn't expect somebody with prostate cancer to have sex, just like you wouldn't expect somebody with Hunter's lesions to have sex. There are moments when we as couples have to express our love in very, very different ways. At the same time, we also don't want to devalue them in any way. Um, uh, it's important to have a safe word. You know, we IC patients are very good at, especially if you're at home and your partner, whether it's a man or a wife, is out working and you're having a wicked flare that day and you had nobody to talk to. And you're just, you know, it's building up inside. Your anger, your frustration is like, oh, holy hell. And then when your partner walks in, woo, word soup. You hit them. You hit them with, oh, honey, it was such a terrible day. I had so much pain. Doctor wouldn't listen to me. I feel so, yeah, 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 yeah. And here your partner is just blindsided by the fact that you are dumping on them. And this is why having a support group is so important because you have to understand that your partner will never, ever, ever, ever be able to say, I understand because they don't have IC. I have IC. If you called me and said, oh my God, I'm having the worst flare in the world. I don't know what to do. I am so angry. Yada, yada. My doctor said this, whatever. You call us an icy buddy. We get to say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I totally get it. It's awful. It's terrible. Right? You got to have a relief valve. You got to have a relief valve so that when your partner gets home, you're not dumping on them. Um, and you have to accept the fact that you, you want them to say exactly the right thing. And they can't because they don't live with it. We live with it. You got to have your circle of icy friends. Um, also important to remember that everybody deserves love and affection. And even if you cannot have a penis in your vagina, that does not mean that there are other ways that things can be accomplished. You can, as an example, have a tenga or a flesh, a fleshlight, which are male sex toys that mimic a vagina that you can hold. Um, we were sitting around one day going, there's got to be something for those moments when a woman cannot have a penis in her, you know what? And it turned out there are. And the fleshlight, flat, fleshlight 
and the tango, the tango is better, the tango flip ball. And I should have demos, darn it. Hey, if my sister, my I don't know if my sister's watching right now. Could you please remember to pull one out, even if we have them anymore? I don't even know if we have them. We sold them for years. Uh, I got to get one down here in my office so that I can show them to you. But anyway, so for those moments when you cannot be intimate, that does not mean that you cannot use something like that. Okay, but last but not least, getting back to Santa Claus. Uh, he told this really meaningful story to us. And he said, he said, I have a couple that I've been caring for, for years. They've seen me for help for their, for their relationship for years. And I don't get it. I love them. I, I am so envious of the love that this couple has and how joyful they are and how satisfied that they are. I keep telling them they don't need to come and see me anymore. And we're like going, you know, in this group, we're going, okay. And he goes, well, but there's an issue. And we're like, okay, what? He goes, well, he was in the war. And we're like, okay. He goes, no, you don't understand. He was badly injured in the war. We're like, okay. He goes, no, you don't understand. He lost his penis. A landmine took his penis off. So his question is, he then asked us, he said, so, how could a man without a penis have a sex life that other men absolutely envy? And I'm one of them. And we're like, how? And he goes, outer course. Outer course. So we're like, okay, what's outer course? He goes, you know, you know that point before orgasm when you just feel so good. And you're, you know, you're like if it lasts a minute or two before it actually happens. He goes, the point of outer course is to use fingers, tongues, whatever, to get your partner to that point right before orgasm. And then your goal is to keep them there for an hour. <laughs> an hour. And uh, and if orgasm happens, great. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter because hell, your, your partner's so happy, they're not gonna care one way or the other. And so, and again, this was a professor from the UC San Francisco Medical School who, who was teaching our IC support group this. So we were all, you know, he finished his, he finished his uh, presentation and I had a whole bunch of couples there. I had young couples, I had old couples, I had straight couples, I had gay couples, and they all walked out with their heads together and they were kind of laughing going, hmm, maybe, okay, maybe we need to try this, you know, right? Well, a month later, we had our meet, we had we had our next meeting, and they all came back, and they were all blushing. And the couple that was blushing the most was the elderly couple in their seventies. And they went, "Oh my God! If somebody had only taught us this when we were younger, our sex life would have been completely different." So you don't necessarily have to have a penis in your vagina to have a wonderful sex life. Google outer course, learn about it. There are options, my friends. There are options. Carol says, I just got my first pelvic floor exam last week. And of course I have very tight muscles. A girl that did it was very nice, made me feel comfortable. It was at Marathon PT in Easton, Massachusetts. I went back Wednesday. She had another internal along with some trigger point therapy, breathing. What kinds of physical therapy have you done? Okay, well, you have to ask that of people. Melody's going to go see Dr. Evans in September. Awesome sauce. You're going to love him. I'd be amazed if you didn't. It's one doctor of the year for the last five years. Gwen says, you live alone. You wish you had a friend to chat with. I hate being lonely. So Gwen, there are some IC support groups up in Canada, but, but girl, come on now. You're on Facebook. There's there. Oh no, you actually, you're on YouTube. Um, this would be a, a really good uh, opportunity for you to come on over to the IC network, join our, join the IC network support group over there. Uh, or, you know, if uh, you can create an anonymous account on Facebook, you know, if you want to go in and participate in some groups over there too, just know that Facebook is really notorious for fighting. 
And um, as I wrote in what I was writing earlier today, you have to just try a couple of different groups until you find the group you like. And don't be surprised if you know, there are some groups that if you don't believe the way they believe, they kick you out. Don't take it personally. It just is what it is. You got to find you got to find your people. And it's a journey to find your people. Gwen said her problems began with a military a doctor in the military who did a surgery on you. Gwen, I'd love to talk to you next week. Give me a phone call. I'd love to hear what happened to you, and let's see if we can uh, we can give you some options. Kathy uh, is asking, is the newest IC med that doesn't have sulfur available yet? Yes, it is, my dear. Blood arrest. Uh, although you need to know it does have chondroitin sulfate in it. Mm. Oh, I see. I see. You know what? You're. I think you're asking about the Piora. So the Piora we should have by the end of the month. The Piora does not have any sulfur in it. Did I remember? I mean, I remember we did a whole email exchange. I didn't. I think that was with you. We did an email exchange. Marie said she missed the medicines we talked about to take before and after intercourse. After intercourse is usually just a muscle relaxant. A muscle relaxant. Flexoril. Baclofen, Valium, Vaginal Valium Suppository. Sleepy Bookworm on YouTube says, I suffer. I love your name, hun. I love your name. Uh, I'm a bookworm too. Uh, I suffer from constant pain and am now on very strong painkillers. What supplements would you advise to help ease the pain? Bladder built. Well, okay, so we got. So, so sleepy again, number one, you got, we got to know, we can't talk about treatments until we understand your subtype, hun. We need to know why you're in pain. Is it from your bladder wall from Hunter's lesions? That's subtype one. Subtype two is, is it from direct bladder wall injury? It, number three, is it from your pelvic floor? Number four, is it from nerves? Or number five, is it from central sensitization? So we kind of need to understand your subtype first. So let's say that your, your subtype is from Hunter's lesions. If you've got Hunter's lesions, it's going to be very hard for a supplement to be beneficial. In the long run, we need to get those lesions treated correctly and, and directly. And that's usually uh, injecting a steroid into the lesion or cauterizing a lesion. Okay. Uh, Piora, which is a PEA product, has been uh, has been shown in many research studies to be helpful with chronic pain. So Piora or PEA would be a viable option in that circumstance. If you have bladder wall injury from chemotherapy or from drinking too much coffee or uh, or estrogen atrophy, then doing something that would calm and soothe your bladder and maybe coat your bladder so urine cannot get into it would be viable. And so we would be looking at um, bladder rest or bladder builder or sister renew or desert harvest aloe. Those would be the ones for that. Um, and you say you're too tired to try Elmeron. I mean, too scared to try Elmeron. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm really glad I never, I, I don't know. There was something when Elmeron was improved in 1996 and I was reading through the materials, there was something about it and it just might've been vanity about my hair didn't want to lose my hair, but I don't remember exactly, but I knew from day one that I was going to do everything I could not to take Elmeron. And I'm kind of glad in the long run, but we also now know that my subtype was different anyway, so it wouldn't have helped me. Your gut, got to follow your gut. Lynn says, what do you, what do you suggest for frequency? Well, so Lynn, same thing applies to you. We have, to, we have to know what's causing your, your, your frequency. Frequency is derived from the alpha afferent nerve in your bladder wall. Okay. Frequency urgency. So comes from a very specific nerve group. This is a nerve group that works all day, every day to tell you when you need to pee. And when that nerve group is overstimulated, like with caffeine, it will give you more frequency and more urgency. This is a three-dimensional picture of, of your bladder. So we have a, 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 a top mucosal barrier because, hello, your bladder is like your mouth. It is a mucous membrane organ. It is covered with a nice, thick, robust coating of mucus 
the ax to protect everything underneath it from whatever's in your urine, right? So we have a top layer of mucus, then we got four layers of urothelial cells, epithelial cells, and then underneath that, hello alpha afferent nerve and hello blood vessels. So something is tweaking this nerve for you, hun. I would be looking first at the health and integrity of your bladder wall because if you don't, if you don't have mucus, anything in your urine gets down here where it can trigger, where it can trigger those nerves. If you do have mucus, it doesn't get through. So could you have some estrogen atrophy going on that is making your bladder lining thinner and more vulnerable? If you have a dry vulva and a dry vagina, then you can also assume that you have a dry urethra and a dry uh, bladder. And so having eyeballs on the organ, having a doctor look at the quality and health of your skin is very, very important. And knowing too that you might be able to use a topical estrogen, uh, a compounded estrogen uh, topically on your vagina at your urethra to help stimulate the production of more mucus. The second thing we're gonna look at is, is there anything else going into your bladder on a daily basis that is triggering it? Are you doing anything with caffeine? Are you doing even one cup of coffee or one, or one soda a day? Uh, are you taking a multivitamin? Multivitamins are notorious for irritating that bladder wall. We want to rule that stuff out. And then last but not least, understand that yes, tight pelvic floor muscles, when you've got tight pelvic floor muscles, they're squeezing your bladder. And when you squeeze your bladder, bam, use blood flow. And you see how long it takes for the blood to flow right back into that skin? You have to understand that when you've got tight muscles, it's very hard for your bladder wall to be healthy because it is being deprived of good blood flow and good nutrients. So we got to work on those muscles too. Hey, you know what? It's time for a giveaway. I love this is my, one of my favorite parts. So everybody who... At our last meeting, uh, y'all should have gotten, for the people who won, we gave away a whole bunch of stuff. Y'all should have them now because they went out. Our giveaway today is bladder rest. I, I've got three bottles with names available. Let me get them right now. Uh, ouch. Oh, I just rolled over my toe. Ow. All right. I got three, three bottles of bladder rest here that I will send, happily send as, as a gift to any of you. So now we got to figure out how to do it. So we did, we've done colors and we've done numbers. Um, <laughs> I could be really, <laughs> I could be really evil and, and say, pick a presidential contender, <laughs> but I won't do that. No politics, no politics. Uh, okay. Um, the three people who name the state that I have written down. Uh, thank you, Svetlana. Yeah, it's one of my, this is a happy shirt because I have a good reason to be happy today. All right, the three people who, who write, no, 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 I can't do it that way. The first person to write down this state in the United States is going to get the first bottle Oh, so all right, everybody. So you can guess as many as times as you want. The first person to to guess this state is going to get the first bottle. Start now. Marie, no. Nope. Nope. Nope.
Keep going. Nope. Nope. Keep going. Oh, man. Svetlana, that would have been a good one, but no, that's not it. Nope. 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 I could give a clue. Nope. 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 Oh, my God, you guys. Nope. 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 Okay, I'm going to give you a clue. It's a state where the same letter is the first letter and the last letter. The state where the first letter and the last letter are the same. There are several states who have this, but that is your clue. Oh, you guys, you're going you're gonna to make me give you another clue? Melody, Melody Savage. The answer was Arizona. Melody Savage, it is you who get the first bottle. So Melody, um, and you are on uh, Facebook. You need to email me icnetwork at mac.com, your mailing address. Bottle number one, Melody Savage. All right. Bottle number two. It's going to be an academic question about IC. Okay. Let's see. Let's let's test your let's test your knowledge here a little bit. What's the name of the doctor who invented Elmeron? What's the name of the doctor who invented Elmeron? I give you a minute. Let's see if anybody anybody has the answer to that one. He also developed the potassium sensitivity test, and I know some of you are Googling this right now, and the puff questionnaire. Anybody know the name of the doctor? You will get a bottle of bladder rest. Anybody? David Kaufman, no. Good guess, though. What's the name? I can tell you he's at UC San Diego. Does that help? <laughs> Svetlana, Dr. Elmeron, no. <laughs> All right. He's considered the grandfather of the IC movement. So he invented Elmeron, he invented the potassium sensitivity test, he invented the puff questionnaire, he's practiced at UC San Diego for 30 years. Anybody know his name? You guys are funny. There you go, Marie Jordan got it, Dr. Lowell Parsons. Lowell Parsons invented Elmeron. So Marie, you get this next bottle. Hey man, you know, listen, the point of a support group isn't just to... Okay, Marie, your name, bam, on this bottle, woohoo. All right, and the last one. I 
I want I, I kind of want to ask you to tell tell us a funny bladder joke, but that's not gonna work. What would be a good, what would be a good way to give this last bottle out? Anybody have any ideas? All right. All right. This is going to be super, super easy. Oh, except it's not fair. Damn it. It's not fair. Wouldn't be fair to our YouTube people. All right. We'll, we'll do a color. We'll do a color. All right. I have written the color down. Whoever gets the color first, color, whoever can't make it, just give it to me. Whoever guesses the color first will get this last bottle. Okay. So go ahead. It's not blue. It's not red. Carol, Carol Morgan, Carol Morgan, yellow baby. That's what it was. So Carol Morgan. So for for Carol Morgan and Marie Jordan and Melody Savage, I need you guys to send me an email with your mailing address and I will send these out to you. Very anxious to hear what you think, okay? All right, guys, listen, we have been doing this for two hours and I don't know about you, I have been only getting four hours of sleep a night for the last four or five days because I've been working on this big project for a major university. We turned it in this morning, this, 30 minutes before I started this meeting, I am free. I am free. Oh, probably the most important IC writing project I've done today. And so I'm going to want to go take a walk and then have, have uh, something to drink and just breathe a little bit. So uh, last call for questions, last call for questions, last call for questions. Uh, Melody, I see network at Mac, M -A -C, M as in Mary, A as in Apple, C as in Charlie.com. Or you can private message me on uh, Facebook. I'm Jill Heidi Osborne. Last call for questions. Last call for questions. Let me go back. I thought I saw one go through there. Marie, uh, uh, anybody can, yeah, you're absolutely welcome to call me. When is a good time? It's always best to call me early afternoon California time or late afternoon California time. Uh, uh, I usually start with phone calls early and then um, uh, I will even call call you back, you know, at eight o'clock your time if it's if it's my time. Last call for questions. I bit my lip. I see I got a little thing right there. So frustrating. All right, my friends. Well, if you're done, I guess I'm done too. I hope that you have a wonderful evening tonight. I hope that you sleep well. I hope that you have a great Father's Day. Make sure that you love on the men in your life, your dad, your grandfather, anybody, because men deserve so much love and support too, especially guys who are struggling. They, you know, the chant, one of the differences between men and women with IC is with with women, we naturally talk about it. So we tend to get more support where guys tend to hide it and they don't talk about it. And so it's really, really important that you talk about it. All right. Give them some love. They deserve it. All right, everybody. I will see you later. It's been a long week. Goodbye, Facebook. All right, YouTube. See you later, alligators. Be well.